good needle handling technique is critical, not only for efficacy, which is getting your needle into the correct place to deposit local anesthetic, but also safety, which is minimizing mechanical trauma to nerves. Any needle nerve contact will induce an inflammatory reaction, as this paper elegantly shows. But whether this causes significant trauma will be proportional to the force that you apply with this contact. It's therefore vital to develop good needle control. Here are two exercises you can do to learn how to control your needle with finesse. The first is to practice needling on your own skin with a block needle. In fact, I often get my trainees to do it on me. The first thing this teaches you is to learn how to hold the hub with a relaxed grip. One of my favorite analogies is to imagine you are wielding a conductor's baton. Think about making the same gentle and graceful movements with your needle. The second thing you will learn is how to perform gentle probing, which is quite safe on tough tissue layers, as you see in the accompanying video of a supraclavicular brachial plexus block. From the degree of sharp sensation that you experience on your skin, you'll also learn the effect of different degrees of pressure applied at different angles of needle insertion. Probing motions help to discern where your tip is without causing any harm. The rolling movement of solid structures like nerves tells you where they are and also where the safe zones and fascial planes are that will allow you to advance and safely slide past nerves. The second exercise is to take a piece of paper, fold it once over, and holding it like I've shown, try to pierce just one layer without going out the other side. Advance in a slow, controlled motion, bracing your hands appropriately and feeling for the tactile pop or give that signals you have punctured the layer of paper or fascia. In this auxiliary brachial plexus block, you see me gently probing the fascial sheath of the plexus between media nerve and artery, and then gently piercing it before hydrodissecting around the media nerve. I then advance to pierce the fascial septum overlying the radial nerve using the same controlled advancing motion before then hydrodissecting the compartment. So to sum up, practice holding the needle hub in a relaxed grip, which will stop you from exerting too much force with the needle tip. Differentiate between gentle probing motions that are used to localize your needle tip and to identify solid structures from piercing movements. Piercing movements are used to puncture fascial layers and they should be applied with controlled constant forward pressure. Focus your attention on sensing the tactile give as you pop through the layer and then immediately back off all of the forward pressure when that happens.